the expected release of that controversial and classified House Intelligence Committee staff memo. NBC News has confirmed the president today chose not to stop its release, though he's also chosen not to release it himself. Back to the hill it goes. New York Times reporting today, quote, Mr. Trump, who had a brief window to block the memo's disclosure on national security grounds, was expected to tell Congress on Friday that he had no objections and would likely not request any material be redacted, according to a senior administration official. It would then be up to the House Intelligence Committee, whose Republican leaders have pushed for its release, to make the document public. New report tonight by the Washington Post gives us some insight into how the president arrived at that decision, that conclusion. According to the Post, quote, before he had even read it, Trump became absolutely convinced of one thing, the memo needed to come out. And that, quote, the president did not actually see the memo until Wednesday afternoon, that would be yesterday, following the committee's Monday vote to initiate its release. That was after the president was caught on a hot mic coming up the aisle after the State of the Union Tuesday night, <laughs> promising 100 percent to release the memo. The decision goes against the strong objection, to put it mildly, of the FBI. The agency on Wednesday told the White House it has, quote, grave concerns about material omissions of fact that fundamentally impact the memo's accuracy. Republicans claim the memo proves the FBI improperly handled a court order to spy on a former Trump camp pain aid and that special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation is a fraud. But to Democrats, this is a highly and selectively edited, politically motivated attempt to discredit and undermine the FBI, the Department of Justice, and the overall Russia investigation. What's the most dangerous thing about this in the current context? It's this. The president is looking for a reason to fire Bob Mueller. The president is looking for a reason to fire Rod Rosenstein. The bigger concern I have right now is for Rod Rosenstein. Uh, this has been true for me for some time. And why Rod Rosenstein and not Bob Mueller? The White House knows it would face a firestorm if it fired Bob Mueller. What's more effective is to fire Bob Mueller's boss. Now, according to the same Washington Post report, quote, Trump suggested to aides and confidants that the memo might give him the justification to fire Rosenstein, something about which Trump has privately mused or make other changes at the Justice Department, which he had complained was not sufficiently loyal to him. The consequences reach beyond politics here. There are also serious national security concerns, which we will talk about here this evening. Earlier today on this network, a former deputy assistant attorney general under President Clinton put it this way. Look, the distinction here, the divide is not between Republicans and Democrats or executive and Congress. It's between grown-ups and children. Anybody who knows anything about FBI operations would understand, party aside, this is playing with more than fire, uh, with grave risk to the national security. And you're exactly right when, the, when FBI says to the public, uh, we're talking grave concerns, that's a, that's a signal that, that uh, the, the potential consequences are cataclysmic. On that same broadcast with Nicole Wallace emerged this new reports this evening that some people inside the White House think releasing the memo may indeed be a mistake. Jonathan Swan of Axios is reporting tonight that, quote, inside the Trump administration, sources who've been briefed on the Nunes memo expect it will be underwhelming and not the slam dunk document it's been hyped up to be. And that quote, there's internally anxiety, internal anxiety about whether it's worth angering the FBI director and intelligence community by releasing this information. Interesting point to bring in our lead off panel for a Thursday night, three journalists who've been at the very center of this story for days on end. Philip Rucker, White House bureau chief for the Washington Post, Julia Ainsley, NBC News national security and justice reporter, and Michael Schmidt, New York Times Washington correspondent. Julia, I'm going to ask you to start us off with where this stands, how many hours could we be away from a release? And the third subpart of my question is, what did I hear today that the House might need to be in session, however pro forma, for this to be made public? 
Okay, Brian, so when we talk about where this stands now with the White House, it seems that the president has decided, or he even decided a few days ago, that he wanted this memo to be made public. As other people have pointed out, this is something that Trump has said for a long time, even since Tuesday night at State of the Union, 100 percent he wants to release this memo because he sees this as a shot against this FBI, and he sees the FBI as an insurgency against his presidency. As far as where this stands with Congress, this gets a little bit complicated when we talk about all of the ways that this could possibly come out. This is still classified information. It doesn't look like the president is declassifying it. He's just sending it back to the Hill, saying he's okay with them releasing it, but they still have the problem of whether or not that they can release classified information. The one way that they can do that is by reading this memo on the floor. There is a protection against um, speaking speeches that are made on the floor of the House because they wanted for th this law was made, this rule was made so that members of the House and Senate could speak openly in a public forum without having to worry about whether or not they were openly discussing classified information. So this could be the one loophole. It's the way the Pentagon Papers were read. That's how that was disclosed. And so we could see this all go down in a very public way. But of course, like what we saw from the Axios reporting, what if this is just built up to be a lot of nothing? We'll somebody, find that out, I guess. Somebody should really think about making a movie about the Pentagon Papers. Hey, Phil, um, take yeah. us into your reporting, starting with when the president first became aware of the existence of this memo. Yeah, so the president first became aware of this about two weeks ago. He was on a call with a number of uh, House conservatives to discuss the government shutdown, and uh, Congressman Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan, both of them allies of the president, uh, brought it to his attention on that call, brought up the idea of declassifying this Nunes memo. The president didn't think much of it at that moment, uh, but his chief of staff, John Kelly, followed up with Meadows, learned more about this, figured out what kind of role the president might play in applying public pressure to get this memo released publicly, and the president very quickly tuned in and became very supportive of releasing this memo. He watched a lot of cable news segments, including an interview that Congressman Trey Gowdy uh, had on CNN last week, just before uh, Trump headed off for that trip to Davos, Switzerland, and became really encouraged by the idea that this memo could, uh, in some ways, vindicate him uh, on Russia and his feeling that the investigation has been a witch hunt. And to that point, Brian, about that, that Axios was reporting about fears about it being a dud, I can tell you from our reporting tonight that Chief of Staff John Kelly, after he reviewed the memo, told the president privately that he did not think uh, he had any national security concerns with it, but it, that, that it was not as compelling a read as the president had been led to believe. Well, that's interesting, Michael. And we come to you. Trump says it shows uh, bias. The people around Trump, the people on the Republican side of the committee seem to be uh, energized to get this out. But we're getting the first glimmers that it may not have all that much impact. And I guess we have to add to that the potential impact of the minority report, the Democrats kind of counter memo when that gets gets into the bloodstream. Yeah, I mean, that would be a huge uh, setback for the president, because this is clearly the most aggressive thing that he has done public relations-wise to try and brush back the Justice Department. This is a clear effort to undermine Rosenstein, Mueller by extension. It would create a lot of turbulence for the FBI and create lots of questions. Now, if this comes out and there's not a lot of there there, the president will find himself in a very vulnerable position. Mueller has been spending a lot of time looking at his conduct in office. It's become increasingly clear to the public that there is an obstruction of justice question that Mueller is going to have to make in terms of what to do about the president. And it, he, he could be even more vulnerable than he is now. And that would be a, a very, 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 uh, you know, damaging thing uh, for the... For